accompanied by a squelching sound. Another blob appeared, and then another. Joe looked hard. Rain? No, something thicker, more alive. She switched off the scanner and stood thinking. Conditions looked nasty outside. She went to the clothing locker on the wall and took out a hooded coat and a pair of thick gloves. And as she put them on, she went back to the doctor. I, I don't know if you can hear me, doctor, but I'm going to look for help. I'll be back as soon as I can. And then she slipped the log recorder into her pocket, operated the door control, and went out into the jungle. The door of the TARDIS closed behind her. The TARDIS had landed in the middle of a thicket of spongy plants, which seemed to give out a, a sinister hissing sound. The police box, the TARDIS's exterior form, was covered with blobs of some thick white substance. And even as she watched, one of the spongy plants swayed forward and spat another blob onto it. Well, deciding the TARDIS wasn't likely to be harmed by a few plants, she turned to go. As she moved, something struck her shoulder. One of the plants had shot a stream of viscous liquid at her. Shuddering, she wiped it off with her gloved hand. And hurrying out of range, Joe pushed her way through the jungle. To her great relief, it soon became less dense, giving way to a stretch of sandy ground on which the plants grew more sparsely. The temperature rose dramatically, and it was dawn, just as if someone had switched on a light. A great yellow sun blazed down from the sky, and Joe found it intolerably hot in the hooded coat. She took it off, noticing that the splash of fluid from the sponge plants had turned itself into a thick green mould. So she threw the coat to one side and carried on without it. Dotted among the other plants were taller reed-like growths, surmounted with a